The proud carrier of Malaysia, Malaysia Airlines, is an airline which is shrouded in mystery. With the disappearance of MH370, the whole world has focused their attention on the national carrier and are somewhat skeptical of their abilities. They've seen more than their fair share of bad luck in recent years, but their history starts with a humble beginning. Now, the airline was founded all the way back in 1937 called the Werns Air Service. They started operating services between Singapore, Kuala Lumpur and Penang with scheduled passengers and also mail services. The schedule consisted of only two to three weekly flights around Malaysia using two D Halivan Dragon aircraft. During this time, the Second World War was about to begin, but unsurprisingly, the service wasn't seized with the Japanese occupation of Malaysia and Singapore during the Second World War. Now, after the World War, however, there was a new start with a partnership between the state's company and Imperial Airways. A few other British Commonwealth Airlines provided technical assistance, and by 1955, Malayan Airlines had joined the International Air Transport Association, and it had a small fleet of Douglas DC-3s. Later, these were extended to aircraft such as the Douglas DC-4s, the Vickers Viscount, and also the Lockheed L-1049. Now, by 1960, the airline became a state-run airline, and it became a public-listed company. Malaysia Airlines was firmly placed in the Federation of Malaysia, and it changed their name from Malayan Airlines to Malaysia Airlines. In 1966, with Singapore breaking away, the airline changed again to Malaysia Singapore Airlines, although this was always a troubled partnership. Despite this, however, they embraced the jet age and was one of the first few airlines to order aircraft such as the Boeing 707s and also the 737s. Many attempts were made for the two airlines to coincide peacefully, however, just six years later, the two airlines decided to part ways. Singapore Airlines took the entire fleet of the Boeing 707s and five Boeing 737s, as well as the Malaysia Singapore Airlines headquarters, which was located in Singapore. This left Malaysia Airlines with a rump of the airline, and instead of using the initials of MSA, they changed them to MAS. So, fast forward a few years, and the airline was gradually growing. They flew domestic routes within Malaysia, but they needed to expand, and by 1976, they bought the DC-10 and began flying to London. These flights later included Amsterdam, Paris and Frankfurt. Now, their growth increased exponentially during the 1980s when they expanded to Australia and the US. But their biggest milestone came in 1993 when they purchased their first Boeing 747. The entire nation was proud of this achievement and they launched services to South America. However, these flights didn't last too long due to the decrease in demand. So we're coming closer to the year 2000, and the financial crisis occurs in Asia. Now this was ill-timed because it was a great period of growth for the carrier, but this is also when it started to go downhill for the airline. Apparently, the carrier boasted of their achievements, but when evidence was asked, none was given. They had too many planes, inefficient route networks, poor customer service, and also a poor load factor. They had to cut many of their unprofitable routes, and they also had to sell a few of their brand new 747 fleets, with Qantas picking up at least three of the planes at a bargain price. After that came a series of incidents which inevitably would hurt the airline. In the year 2000, the airline retired a brand new Airbus A330 due to a chemical leak which made the plane unworthy. In 2003, there were several incidents where aircraft were damaged and vandalized at Kuala Lumpur Airport. There were also incidents involving snapped cables, which made flights very unsafe. After that came MH17, then after that came MH370. So, since 1977, they've had around 20 minor incidents that have been recorded by the air industry officials, along with three fatal crashes. But it's not all doom and gloom for the airline. They've executed a five-year recovery plan to turn the airline around. This includes retraining their cabin crews, the ground staff, the flight crew, and many more. And for those who decided to stay and serve the airline, cuts on benefits and pay also followed. A rebranding was also discussed, but they decided to stick with what they already have. But the biggest decision that they made, which is also a great one, was to replace the A380s with smaller and more efficient planes. They already have six of the A350s in their fleet, and it's a great choice due to the commonality between the A350 and the A330 fleet. They've also started to launch new routes in their network, improve their customer service, and try to remove the negative image associated with the airline due to incidents from the past. 
Now, it will most definitely take them time for them to get where they want to be and start competing on the same level as Singapore Airlines. But if there's one thing that the industry has taught us, that even the most unlikeliest airline can succeed.